There we go. Should be on. Here we go. Have yourselves a great meeting. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to General Council, January 9th, 2024. Before we get started, let's take a moment of silence to remember and pay respects to those that we have lost recently. Also, our staff member, Dylan Isaacs, an employee since 2021, dedicated his career to helping his community as an archeological community monitor May we honor their memory and hold them in our thoughts. Can we have a moment of silence, please? Thank you. So let's, let's get to the agenda. The adoption of the agenda, is there any additions? Elena? Is there anyone else? Melba? If not, can I have a mover to accept the agenda? Audrey, second by Dale, all in favor? Anybody opposed? See none carried. There's no delegations. Number five, adoptions of general council minutes of December 12th. If there's no questions or comments, is there a mover? Moved by Melba, second by Kerry. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Seat on Kerry. Is there any council reports? See any? So number seven um, is scheduling. The independent electricity systems operator engagement opportunities webinars for January 15th from one to three and January 17th from one to three. This discussion will provide an overview about who is the electric system operator is and is the role in the electricity sec sector addressing Ontario's electricity needs and the um, decarbonation goals uh, procuring electricity. The diverse mix of energy source and their unique roles in the grid. The critical role of the municipalities in the success in energy transition and ongoing uh, the upcoming innovations. Nathan, can you add to this? Thanks, Chief. So yeah, the IESO is um, embarking on, at least they have been over the last few years, on a process for Indigenous engagement. Um, and this is part of that strategy to start doing uh, a bunch of engagements with First Nation communities as it relates to um, kind of what they do, the programs that they're running, uh, and how they can support First Nations better. So um, they're hosting these two webinars uh, just on uh, that front to, to get the interest safe. And I will have uh, a few employees also join. Okay, thank you. Yep, go ahead, Dale. Just a question for Nathan. Are, is this outside of Ontario Hydro or Hydro One? Okay, so let's go to number eight. Um, just a small chief's update. Uh, again, border issues. Um, community members are still experiencing border mobility issues at the Canadian US border. Um, working with lands and membership to um, get through these situations. Also, I have re recently been informed that the Peace Bridge is only accepting visa as a method of payment by multiple community members. So I just wanna put a notice out to the community so people are prepared. But also my office is working, uh, we reached out to the CDSA, uh, the Director of Indigenous Affairs Secretariat to set up a meeting regarding it. Uh, Dale? Was that just visa just to pay that four dollar toll just to go across the board? It's ten seventy five, I think, oh, to come to into Canada. Oh. 
there's no cash line anymore. It's just um, Visa. Uh, go ahead, Helen. Use your mic. Thanks. What happens if people like me want to go cause I don't have credit cards? And that was some of the complaints that has come in today. And um, they allowed them to pay the money, but it took a while. Um, Amos? You can use also the fact that I just went across at the Peace Bridge. And is it Detroit? Peace Bridge in Detroit or Ambassador? Ambassador. I just come across there and I can use cash. So what's the difference between why, why can't they accept cash? So that was the question because it's only the Peace Bridge. Rainbow doesn't, doesn't offer that. So that was going to be one of the questions. Mm -hmm. So that's um, just the update. And um, we're going to go to the, go ahead, Elena. Added agenda items. I just wanted to bring up, um, so uh, community knows that we all received the messages about the dump. So the closure, the holiday closure, um, and it inconvenienced a lot of people over the holidays. I know that um, Councillor Miller brought to our attention um, a few issues with the elders complex. So I wondered if there was any, and I know you guys are aware of it, so I wondered what was happening with that. Answer, but uh, my recommendation is I like your answer. <laughs> I think community would like your answer too. <laughs> but I think we need more discussions, and I want to um, I want to do some work with staff on the survey uh, to get some responses, and uh, also do some work around uh, possible wellness dates uh, to offset uh, uh, the dates that uh, we would be closing. Uh, offer them some more on this day. So we got some work to do on that, but that's kind of where I was uh, thinking. I was chatting with the chief all, all during the <laughs> Christmas holidays, being Scrooge's over the honor. So I know um, Christmas is over, and, and that's the huge closure, but there are other uh, holidays where the dump would be closed coming up, right? Like Easter, do we? No? Just for working people, right? Like people that work 8.30 to 4.00, or what have you, that those are the days when they're trying to get stuff done and cleaned up and um, if that can be open as much as possible. Um, Helen, then Audrey. Yeah, I think we need to reaffirm the essential service is what we need to do. Um, I think anything that impacts our community is an essential service. And that would be the dump, that would be the septic, and what else? I don't that's right. Daycare. I think that's that should be essential because people just because we're not working doesn't mean nobody else is working. People still have to go to work and have daycare. Then so, that leaves the argument. Why not just remain I, open? All right. What did you say? That that leads to the argument of why don't we just remain open? Well, yeah, just stay open. And people were actually people were complaining because council was closed for two weeks. Um, we never used to years, you know, a few councils back. We never used to close for two weeks. We just closed for maybe the holidays and a couple of days. I don't know how we got to two weeks. <laughs> But I think, like I said, I want to do the surveys of the staff to get some feedback and also at the same time um, look at the the, uh, the concept of uh, adding some additional wellness days for folks, whether they are dealing with mental health or, or whatever they're dealing with. Um, from mm -hmm. the um, It's becoming common uh, in the workplace to, to provide those wellness days and that way they have the flexibility. Because I even heard from some staff that you know they would prefer to work over the holidays, you know, maybe not have a good family situation and would prefer to work. So I want to get some feedback from from folks first on that. Audrey, yeah, mine. I agree with my colleagues. I, I received phone calls as well, and a lot of them were about the uh, septic systems being drained. So I think we need to train more people. And we need to uh, inform our community earlier and remind them that don't wait for uh, December to have your drain, drain your uh, septic tank. So 
we all have a responsibility there and I, I'd like to see us um, be more proactive. And I think it's a good idea that we discuss this more, Nathan. Yeah. Well. Um, go ahead, Melba. Yeah, concerning the log cabin. Can you use your um can you use your mic? Concerning the log cabins. Yeah. Yeah. Um there's no bins there. And they believe that there should be bins because they put their they just put their garbage out at the end of their laneway. So they feel at times that they need a bin to put it in. And there is none there. So that was a good suggestion by the elder that, uh, I don't know, maybe she called other people too, but I know she called Helen and I and had that idea. Thanks. Is that, is that anything else, Melba? Was that your addition? I'll oh. go to my addition now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a virtual presentation on Wednesday, uh, January 17th from 9 to noon, and it's concerning intimate partner violence. And as we know, it's at an all-time high ever since uh, COVID hit, not only us here at Six Nations, but uh, community surrounding us. And it's believed to be an epidemic now, according to Six Nations police. So they deal with this all the time. They would they would know that. So domestic violence has increased. And I'm just wondering if we never have training. When is the last time we've had training? Sometimes, uh, I mean, we hear about it, but we don't know the really intricacies uh, concerning how it really happens, why it happens. So there's going to be this uh, presentation by... Uh, a gentleman who has 30 years in the interventions for abusive men. Uh, they're not saying women, as we know, there are abusive women too. And it's called, why does he do that? He's a prize winning professional uh, that has been doing this work for years and years. And this is sponsored by Six Nations Council and TAP Resources uh, Council under justice. So. I'm wondering if we should take training. I know I'd like to hear more about it. I know there's domestic abuse. We know about it all the time, but are there things that we really need to know what our what our service providers are are really uh, faced with and what they're dealing with? I think we should know that because a lot of times we have a lot of questions and don't understand what work they're really doing and how hard they're working. So I'm suggesting that we take training. Thanks. Thank you for that, Melba, because I just added that. And I think that's when um, also we'll ask each of the counselors what kind of training they would like, because we did take the training um, trauma-informed, yes, um, at the beginning. So I think that just helped that there will be more coming. So for sure, thank you for sharing that, Melba. And if anybody is interested, um, Melba has that information also. So number nine, um, that's the end of the agenda for the open. Is there a motion to adjourn? Moved by Audrey, seconder. Second by Carrie. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Moved. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Have a great night.